Okay, so these two persons are now coming and we can easily see that the tracker has assigned them an ID as 1 and ID as 2 which means that our tracking algorithm is working perfectly fine. Hello and welcome to Rocket Systems YouTube channel. Today in this video we are going to talk about tracking algorithms in OpenCV. So in our previous videos we discussed how we can detect persons in an image or a video file but in this video we are going to detect the persons as well as we are going to track them also. Now what, what this tracking means? So tracking means that we are detecting the persons as well as we are assigning a unique IDs to those persons which means each persons which is detected will have its own unique ID for example 0, 1, 2, 3 and then those IDs will remain as it is until unless that person is moved out of that particular frame. Now we are going to uh, do this over a persons but if you have any other objects for example car, buses, planes or any, any other your custom uh, object you can still follow up with this tutorial and you can use the tracking algorithm to track those objects as well. So let's get started. Now there are a lot of tracking algorithm available online. You can use any algorithm you want because more or less each algorithm works in a similar way. The one which we are going to use is known as a central tracking algorithm. It doesn't have any model involved in this and this is why it's probably one of the easy and one of the fast tracking algorithms I have personally used. Now before we start, start let's just quickly understand how this tracking algorithm works. Okay, so let's assume that this is a frame, this is an image file and let's say this is a person which we have detected using our person detection model and this is another person which our model has detected. So there are two persons in this image file. Now what tracker will does is when we detect any object, a person or anything, we pass the coordinates of that particular object to the tracker and then tracker keeps the record of uh, those coordinates of that particular person. So now what will happen is that in the next frame this person can move to let's say this position or let's say to this or to this or to this position it cannot magically move from this position to any other position let's say at this position so when the person in the next frame it will let's say it, it has moved to this particular position so what we will do is from our code we will pass the new coordinates to the tracker and then tracker will basically calculate the difference between the new coordinates of that particular person and the previous coordinates of that particular position, uh, person and then if it lies between a threshold then the tracker will keep assigning the same object ID to that person so let's say if the person has moved to this position so the, tra uh, the, the, the coordinates are under those thresholds so the ID will remain same similarly the, the person will from here it will move to let's say at this particular position in the third frame so the ID will remain same so in this way tracker keeps keep the same ID for that particular object and then same goes for other persons or other objects in that particular frame. Now when we will start to uh, start coding for that particular tracker I will we will notice that there are two parameters which we can obviously adjust that is max disappeared which means that how many frames the tracker should wait for that particular object to disappear from the frame before it can start to lose that particular uh, ID. So for example, the, the person is in this position, now in the next frame it's in this position, then this position and then finally after fourth or fifth frame the person has moved out of the frame. So at this particular time the tracker will wait for a certain amount of frames and if the person returns back from this position it will assign the same id otherwise it will then lose that particular id so during our python scripting i'll i'll tell you what are those parameters which you can adjust in order to uh, control this particular feature of the of this central tracking algorithm so this is how this central tracking algorithm works now another important thing which we need to understand is about the central tracking algorithm now what happens is that when our model is detecting the objects sometimes because of the multiple inferencing it can detect those same object multiple times so you will notice that we have multiple bounding box drawn on a single uh, object so for example in this case you can see that there is an image where the face detection uh, model has detected faces but on the left side you will notice that there it has detected multiple faces of a single image 
if this happens then our tracker can fail at this particular point because it will assign multiple ids and then you know it will not properly work so in order to resolve this issue we will basically um, implement a max suppression non max suppression which will suppress all these bonding boxes and then it will create a single bonding box for that particular for that particular uh, object so we will also do non max suppression in our uh, python code and then once we have this then our model sorry our central tracking algorithm will uh, work perfectly fine now coming back to our uh, python script so what i've done is that i've create, created a new file called person tracker.py and i have copy pasted the previous code which we use for our person detection in a video file let me just quickly explain you so here are all the imports now at this particular point we have loaded our model file these are all the classes of our model now i'll explain you this later on and then here we are uh, initializing our uh, video file you can use any other file or webcam or rtsp camera now here we are reading the frame we are resizing it and then we are doing the inferencing at this particular position once we have the results we are simply pass using the for loop to go through all the results and then we are simply here showing our application now so this is this is this whole code we have already done in our previous video of the person detection and if you don't have the code you can download the code from the links given in the description box now what we will do is that we will now modify this particular code and we'll add the tracker here so first of all we have to import our tracker so i'll do what we'll do is that we will import the central tracker first so for that i'll use from centroid tracker import centroid tracker now somewhere at this particular point i will uh, instance my centroid tracker so i'll take a variable ct equals to centroid tracker and then inside this we have to pass max disappeared and max distance this so these are the two parameters which i was talking about initially in the video so to start with we will use 60 values 60 and 60 so which means 60 frames we are using for max disappeared and max distance now after this this is the non max suppression which again we were talking about in our initial video, initial part of the video we we are we really need this because if there are multiple boundary box for the same object then the tracker will probably fail now once we have this and somewhere at this particular position we will define a variable to hold all the rectangles so i'll use rects and then inside the for loop we will simply use rects dot append and here i will simply pass the bounding boxes so person box okay that is done now uh, outside of this for loop we will do what we will do is we will pass the bounding box first to our non max suppression and then once we get the filtered noise filtered data from the non max suppression we will pass those bounding box to our centroid tracker okay so for that i will write bounding boxes equals to np dot array and bounding boxes equals to bounding boxes dot as type int and then finally racks equals to non max suppression fast bounding boxes and then i'll pass 0.3 as a threshold now this rex has the actual data i mean there is no uh, noise in this particular variable so we will pass this uh, uh, to our tracker so i'll take another variable and ct dot update rex now once we pass the bounding boxes or the coordinates to our tracker the tracker will give us the bounding box as well as the id of that particular bounding box so we, we will use for loop for object id and bounding box in objects dot items and then we will extract x1 y1 points x1 y1 x2 y2 sorry y2 from this bonding box and then what we'll do is we'll simply convert that to integer so x1 
and then we can simply draw our cv2 rectangle over all these x1 y1 values so i'll use cv2 dot rectangle i'll pass my frame and then i will pass the coordinates so initial coordinates are x1 y1 and then i will pass x2 y2 and then i'll pass uh, the color so we'll use the default red color and then the thickness is 2 and then after that we also need to show the id uh, above the bounding box so for that let's take up a variable text and then id dot format object id and then we will use cv2 dot put text to write this id so frame and then text and then we have to mention the position where we are going to write this so x1 y1 minus 5 so y1 minus 5 means that it will be just above the bounding box and then let's take up a font and then let's define the font size and then again let's take up a very uh, color and then the thickness okay so i guess that's all we need for our tracker let me just quickly revise so we have objects here and then we are drawing the yeah everything looks fine let's let's open up a terminal and let's try to run this code to see if it runs fine or not so i'll move inside the directory and then let's here call person tracker perfect so you can see that this lady is coming and we are showing the id as zero which which is what we wanted and you can also see that the id is not losing up so i mean the the lady is walking and the id i mean the tracker has assigned the same id to the lady so let's wait for some other persons to come and then we will see if uh, we get some incremental id or not also you can notice that the lady has just moved out but our tracker was waiting for the lady to come back but because the lady didn't come back in the frame that's why it was holding that particular id for that uh, person but because it's not in the frame so it's not removed okay so these two persons are now coming and we can easily see that the tracker has assigned them an id as one and id as two which means that our tracking algorithm is working perfectly fine now similarly you can use this to interface any other of your rtsp camera or any other video file you want but the tracker i'm 100 sure that it won't lose any ids and it will keep on assigning uh, the ids to the new persons so i guess that's all for this video this is how you can use a centroid tracking algorithm this is very easy to use and very lightweight and works perfectly fine in all scenarios so that's all for this video thank you for watching this video please like share and subscribe to the channel